this story begins with a very, very odd couple, a couple that I met 20 years ago when I was living in the Peruvian Amazon. It is a tree and a rodent. The tree is the Brazil nut tree. It's one of the tallest and oldest trees in the Amazon. It can grow up to 50 meters high and produces a fruit that looks like a coconut. It's as heavy, as big, and as strong as a coconut. And inside that fruit, we find the seeds, which are the Brazil nuts, those that probably some of you have already tried with your snacks. There's only one animal in the entire forest that can open that fruit, and that is the rodent, and he's called agouti. Now, the agouti looks like a, like a hamster, but about this size, like a giant hamster. It's not a monster. It's not a Pokemon. It's a very cute animal. Now, just like us, the agouti also like the Brazil nuts. So it takes the fruit and with its teeth, opens the fruit and eats some of the nuts, but not all of them. The remaining ones, he puts them in his mouth with the, with the plan to eat them later. So it goes around the forest, just like a hamster. So it goes around the forest and bury the, the seeds. And, um, but our friend, Tiaguti, doesn't have a very good memory and, and forgets where some of the seeds are. Where are my nuts? <laughs> Did I go nuts? Where are they? But guess what? Something amazing happens after that. Those seeds that the Aguti forgot where they were buried are the ones that will become the trees, that magnificent tree, one of the tallest and oldest in the Amazon. How cool is that? Huh? This is a very special relationship that allow these two species to coexist in harmony over years of evolution. Talking about evolution, let's, let's try to imagine uh, five to seven million years ago, our ancestors were living in, in close forest habitats. And eventually they also had a similar harmonious relationship with the environment. And over years of evolution, they started to develop new skills, new features that allow them to transform the environment. Converting the forest for agriculture, building cities, and ultimately affecting the global climate system and thus affecting ourselves. Okay. Let's keep with a little bit more of history. This beautiful city of Florence, where we are, it was founded by the Romans around 2,000 years ago. Probably after that, this city was still covered with trees and forests. And in fact, it was the expansion of the Roman Empire that had a major consequence on the Mediterranean forests. And that in turn may have influenced the downfall of the empire itself. Some authors suggest that because wood was scarce for building ships, the capacity of the Romans to maintain its military power decreased. Also, the economy of the empire was undermined since wood had to be brought from further and further away. And that led the Roman Empire vulnerable to attacks and invasion, of course, in combination with other well-documented problems. The German philosopher Georg Hegel said, the only thing we learn from history is that we learn nothing from history. And yet here we are, in the last 30 years, 420 million hectares of forest were lost, equivalent to one million hectare every month. Okay, maybe it doesn't mean much, but let's have a picture of that. Imagine the whole city of Florence, again, 
which is around 10,000 hectares, okay? Now, imagine the city of Florence covered with trees and animals like the agouti and the Brazil gnat and all the other species around it, okay? It's a deep forest. Now, make it 100 times bigger, okay? That is the amount of forest that is lost every single month. Deforestation is behind the main threats to humanity today. Global climate change, biodiversity loss, including food scarcity. Around 1.3 billion people, or one-fifth of the whole global population, depend on forests directly or indirectly. Between 300 to 350 million of them, and half are indigenous people, depend entirely on forests for their subsistence. Forests provide the essential goods and services for humanity. They help to regulate the local and global climates. They help uh, protect soils. They provide fresh water, pollination, and the list goes on, on, and on, including they support the food crops we rely on. If you had a, a glass of water or a cup of coffee today, you should say, thank you, forest. 75% of the water that is available for domestic, industrial, and agricultural use comes from forest watersheds and wetlands. It is also known that the coffee increases its productivity when it's planted near forests because of the presence of pollinators. But at the same time, the production of coffee is one of the drivers behind deforestation. Okay. We also heard today about the role of forests for climate change mitigation and adaptation. Around 30% of the global emissions come from the loss of forests and agriculture. But it's not only emissions that cause climate change and increase the temperature but it's also the disruption of ecological processes that happen in the forests. This is the case of the Amazon rainforest. The trees in the Amazon rainforest, they pump water from the soil to the atmosphere. The process is called evapotranspiration. And that humidity turns into moisture and circulates over the continent just like flying rivers, rivers that fly above us. And that circulation works like an air conditioning of the planet. So when forests are lost, those flying rivers disappear. Effectively, we are switching off the air conditioning of the planet, and with that, increasing the temperature. But if forests are so important, why are they being destroyed? Why are they disappearing? Actually, deforestation is a very, very complex problem that has political, economical, and social dimensions. But let me share with you one experience on how I learned the complexity of this problem. 20 years ago, I remember a conversation I had with a lady who was working in her farm, on her farm together with her kids, in the same region where I met the agouti and the Brazil nut tree. And I asked her whether there is a, a different way for her to maintain her livelihood without destroying the forest. And, and then she looked at me with a bit of anger and sadness at the same time, and and told me, we don't have any other choice. We need to cut the forest to cultivate our food, to have something to sell in the market. How are we going to feed our children? How are we going to pay for the school? 
for their medicine when they are sick. And I was shocked. I was working in conservation and, and I, didn't, I didn't have any answer to her. I can only acknowledge that she had a genuine need to provide for her family, to look for a better livelihood. And, and I also felt a bit sad because maybe, maybe there's no solution. Maybe you cannot protect the forest and at the same time help people to improve their livelihoods. But here I am today, optimistic, to share some rays of hope with you today. Are you ready to hear some rays of hope? Yeah? OK, wait for it. <laughs> I want you to remember three facts, OK? One, forests provide essential goods and services for humanity, but we are losing them every day. These goods and services are undervalued by the current economic models. We just heard that in the previous week. And people living in the forest, especially communities, have the right for a decent livelihood, just like any one of us here today, right? OK, so once we start acknowledging these facts, we are on track to finding the solution. I see some of you nothing. We are doing well. But just doing that will not solve the problem, right? As Thomas Edison said, vision without execution is hallucination. But there's hope. It is because of people like yourself here or watching this presentation, that we are seeing changes uh, happening in the world. You can be a, a politician, you can be a business person, or you can be a person who just like to drink coffee. Your actions have an impact on forests. It is because of people like yourselves here that the politicians agreed to sign the Paris Agreement, in which many countries make commitments to reduce the emissions from deforestation. It is because of people like you who like to drink coffee, but are mindful that that coffee doesn't need to cause deforestation. That the European Parliament, just three days ago, approved a, a proposal that will enforce companies not to sell products in the European Union that caused deforestation. Kudos to the European Union. <laughs> and also, thank you to them for helping me with my speech. <laughs> and it's also because of people like you, who your preferred brands and companies are also doing something, because you are demanding for that. Companies like Apple, Netflix, Amazon, or the fashion industry, Gucci, Saint Laurent, not these ones. <laughs> or, or even the car industry, uh, BMW, Volkswagen, they are now engaged in reducing their emissions by paying for the forest conservation and restoration. That is called the carbon markets. That is providing new financial sources that can incentivize people to protect their forests and at the same time improve their livelihoods. If I were able to speak to the lady I met 20 years ago, now I can tell her, well, actually, there is an option. There is a choice. Today, you can receive a payment for protecting your forest and also to improve your li livelihood and care for your children. It is happening now. Of course, it needs to be done properly, not as a greenwashing, which can be another problem and another discussion. So these rays of hope give us hope. They are not the ultimate solution, and much more needs to be done. But we are on track. And with that, I want to wish you, may the forest be with you. Thank you.